good morning i have come with the new module module 13 in this module i am going to explain deductions from gross total income this is an important chapter because when you are doing full salary problems so many deductions will be there so the computation will be complete only when you learn deductions from gross total income so that is very very important chapter and its calculations are very simple usually students got an apprehension about how we will do atg deductions so i am teaching it in a simple way because first i will do some simple problems from then i will come into the one one adjustment i will add for each problem that is how always i am taking it in the class also so i know that how i can make it effective for the students and you will find it really helpful so this module is module 13.1 here i am going to explain section atc deduction see if i want to tell you about atc deduction this deduction is used by almost all the salaried class even i am using this because 150000 of their savings we can claim for as a deduction from our gross total income see for example my total salary is 20 lakhs and i always clear and i always get a savings of 150000 under section atc so 20 lakh salary it's getting reduced by 1.5 lakhs that meaning i have to pay tax only for 18.5 lakhs then self occupied house property also i will make a loss of 2 lakhs so again 2 lakhs will reduce so in effect instead of paying tax for 20 lakhs i am paying tax only for 16.5 lakhs so there are other sections also which everybody will make use of i will tell you this is just an example i am telling you this everybody can make use of this so this is a very important section and uh, deductions i am explaining here the theoretical concept only i can explain in this module because the problems are all the problems different sections are combined different deductions are combined so for one problem designing a problem will be difficult so atg only i will explain with the problem then combined module i will take where i am going to explain different sections so that will be really helpful for you and you will find it really interesting so this is what i am going to do so we are going to learn deduction under section atc so that is very useful when you start working you can make use of this information how you can save tax using your saving schemes see one at one side you are saving you are saving for your future unexpected for any emergency you are saving in certain form of investments at the same time you can reduce your tax payments also so that is the advantage so that is the merit of the scheme so that is what we are going to learn so happy learning i will explain with the help of powerpoint presentation so the problems for this i will be explaining with some other module so that is how i am going to do or i will take it as a combined module where i can include different sections so always the problems will be like that so that is what i am going to do so this is very simple i have simplified that and you will find it really useful so the general information i am giving this is available to individuals and hindu undivided families so wherever we are explaining i told you capital gain also we have learned that whoever eligible to claim this certain cases everybody can claim certain cases only individuals and hgf can claim so this is one deduction only individuals and hgf can claim this now amount of deduction shall be actual amount paid or deposited during the previous year in the prescribed saving schemes called as qualifying amount i'll give you a list of items all the saving schemes what all amount you deposited the total in those saving schemes together we are calling it as qualifying amount qa we will use that qa in the short form qualifying amount for deduction under section atc or 150000 whichever is less so in my case i told you i will make it always equal to 150000 so that much income i can reduce not only my case most of the people they will make use of the section they will try to make their savings up to 150000 so they can reduce the tax liability now this deduction is allowed from the gross total income that i told you deductions from gross total income that is the title so one by one deductions we are taking and the first deduction is atc so it's very popular very common used by almost everybody especially the salaried class so one side they are saving their income and at the same time the other side they are 
reducing their tax liability. So that is the merit of this saving scheme or the section itself. Okay, now I told you I will tell you about the eligible schemes. So eligible savings I am explaining with the help of the PowerPoint presentation. So statutory provident fund we have learned. In salary we have learned four types of provident fund are eligible. Statutory provident fund contribution is eligible for ATC deduction. Here you have to remember own contribution. The family members are not included. See here wherever I am, tell, wherever I am telling you own contribution that is only employees contribution. Some saving schemes they can include the family members also. So there I will specify that. See we have learned that provident fund, four types of provident funds are there. Statutory provident fund, recognized provident fund, public provident fund and unrecognized provident fund. See I told you unrecognized provident fund is not recognized by the commissioner of income tax. So it will be there only for the explanation purpose. Here when we do the tax computation only eligible or Provident fund approved by the Commissioner of Income Tax only will come into picture. So the first one is statutory provident fund. Employee's contribution will fully qualify. Fully qualify meaning he can qualify any amount. He can make it up to 150,000. Recognized provident fund fully qualifies. That also only employee's contribution. Public provident fund is different. Employee's contribution, spouse and children can be allowed. So here actual amount deposited or rupees 1,50,000 whichever is less. So this is the individual limit for public provident fund. We have learned that I told you public provident fund maximum amount an employee and SSC can deposit is 1,50,000 and the minimum is 500. So here we are again stressing that point beyond 1,50,000 nobody can contribute for public provident fund. So they cannot, they cannot claim a deduction beyond 1,50,000 also. Now. Next is any amount contributed by employee towards approved superannuation fund. Approved superannuation fund is your pension or anything after your retirement if you want to continue with your see instead of salary. When you retire salary will be over. So after that you will get some pension. So that is superannuation any pension benefit or anything if you are contributing the, the employee is contributing it will fully qualify. Next is LIC premium paid by employee. So here also family members are also included. Spouse and children. This is an important adjustment. Children, this you have to remember, even if it's minor child, major, married or unmarried. Any category of children, they can claim the exemption. So LIC premium, usually they will LIC premium towards ATC deduction. What are the conditions? Usually they will ask for two marks because some adjustments are there in this. Now here also limit also there is a limit, there is an adjustment. Actual premium paid or 20% of sum assured, whichever is less, that is the actual rule. But only 10% of sum assured is allowed if the policy is acquired after 1-4-2012. So before 1-4-2012, if you have acquired the LIC policy, you can claim 20%. Otherwise, it's only 10%. Now, Next is any amount deducted by government from employee salary for deferred annuity or making provision for spouse or children. Deferred annuity meaning first one we have seen that annuity benefits, the annuity, pension benefit they have, employee can contribute. This is for the wife and the family, the family members. If wife is working, husband and the children. So they can get the benefit, actual deduction or 20% of salary whichever is less. So here also the condition will be there. So this Whenever I will come do the problems, I will explain these conditions again. Next is any amount deducted by employer or government for group insurance scheme fully qualifies. So group insurance scheme will be there for almost all the organizations. When an employee is working in an organization, during working hours, if something happened to the employee in the workplace, so employer has to give a compensation. To avoid paying the money compensation from there, uh, exchequer what they will do they will always have a tie up with an insurance company so every month employ the employer will be deducting a certain amount as group insurance from the employee's salary so that amount we can fully claim here as ATC deduction now investments by employee in unit linked insurance plan of LIC or UTI so it will be given in the question unit linked insurance plan of LIC or UTI remember if it's only LIC or UTI he is eligible for deduction if it's anybody else if any other company or organization, it is not eligible. That is fully qualifies again. 
Next is interest accrued in NSE eighth issue. Fully qualifies. I told you NSE, NSE eighth and ninth issue is also now there. Now it's it's in circulation. So you have to remember that it's always interest is getting accrued. Every year we are not getting the interest like bank interest. NSE is a statement, National Savings Certificate. I told you when we get salary arrears, sometimes government instead of giving the money, if they have shortage of funds, what they will give? They will give us NSE certificates, National Savings Certificates. So back side of the instrument, it will be mentioned. After one year, this much interest will be added to your saving or the, whatever the face value of the instrument. Next year, second, see if it's maturing after six years, then all the six years value will be there. So we will not get that interest in hand in between. Only on the date of maturity, we can go and claim the entire amount. So that interest accrued, you can get from the backside of the instrument and you can claim under ATC. Now next is amount invested by empl employee in NSE 8th and 9th issue. See, even if you have invested in NSE 8th issue or 9th issue, that also will fully qualify. Next is amount deposited under National Savings Scheme 1992. That also fully qualifies National Savings Scheme Certificates. Next is amount paid to LIC under Jeevan Dara or Jeevan Akshay scheme. So when you see the advertisement also you can see that Jeevan Dara, Jeevan Akshay. If you see the advertisements in the television or newspaper or anywhere you can see that ATC deduction. This saving, this LIC policy is eligible for ATC deduction. So the amount fully qualifies for deduction. Next is amount deposited with mutual fund under a scheme of pension fund. So if it mutual fund, if they say that this is related to a pension fund. So this you can, you are eligible to get a pension whenever you can decide after 5 years or after 10 years. Then that scheme also will be fully qualified for ATC deduction. ATC deduction meaning the total investment in all these instruments you can make it up to 1,50,000 and you can reduce from the gross total income. Now amount deposited with nationalized bank under home deposit scheme of national housing bank. So national housing bank if you are depositing any amount that also will be fully qualified. Now, any amount deposited with an authority engaged in housing development or town and rural development. See, Bangalore Development Authority, Cochin Development, Greater Cochin Development Authority, Calicut Development Authority. So, like this, different town planning commission, all this, any, any place if you take their development authority will be there. So, that amount will also fully qualify. Now, any amount deposited with housing finance institutions. Any housing finance, Can Bank, Can Canara Bank Housing Finance Institution or SBI Housing Finance Institution, anything if you deposited any amount that will also fully qualify. So any amount invested in equity link saving scheme, you can see that some schemes they are announcing as equity link saving scheme. So one portion equity link, so whatever they are eligible for like equity shareholders that also you are eligible to get. So equity link saving scheme, the saving scheme not only will give you interest but also the dividend, just like an equity shareholder, whatever you are supposed to get. So that is how the scheme is designed. So that is the advantage. That scheme also will be fully qualifying for ATC deduction. Now any amount repaid under housing building loan principal amount. See housing loan, whatever interest we are claiming in income from house property. Principal amount repaid, you can claim in ATC deduction. Now tuition fees paid to two children of the individual to any school, college or university in India. This is very important. If they are paying to a foreign university, it is not eligible within the within the country, any school, college or university. It will fully qualify. Then any amount paid to equity shares and debentures of any eligible issue. So equity shares and debentures, if they, if they are, if they are inv investing, then that amount also will fully qualify. Now amount paid to mutual fund. If you are investing in mutual fund, then also it will fully qualify. Next is any fixed deposit with a scheduled bank for at least 5 years. Lock-in period for the fixed deposit should be 5 years, then it will be fully qualifying. Next is investment in notified securities issued by NABARD, National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development. So if they are issuing, if they are investments, any investment of NABARD, if you are investing, that also will be fully qualifying. Now, five-year deposits with post office time deposits. If you have deposits with post office, now you know that post office deposits are becoming very popular. So, the survival of the post office itself is now with the whatever activities they are doing into the savings sector. So, this scheme is getting popular. 
5 year deposit with the post office time deposits it is fully qualified it fully qualifies now deposit under senior citizen savings scheme rules 2004 now how we will identify these schemes usually when they will announce they will say that this is meant for senior citizen savings scheme that meaning that scheme also can be fully qualified now amount deposited in sukanya samruddhi account this is recent one after the bjp government at the center they have introduced this amount deposited in sukanya samruddhi account deposited in the name of a girl child of the individual or any girl child for whom such individual is the girl child's legal guardian now we know that so government is giving so much in, so much importance for education of girl child empowering girl child so this north india and all so many people that a girl children children's education so that trend itself is changing government is helping so whatever amount you are investing that is fully qualifies for atc deduction so the promotion of the girl child promotion of the girl child and their education their empowerment so that is that is what they are doing with the this scheme sukanya samruddhi account so this is a special initiative of the central government so i told you the what all the eligible schemes so all the schemes what all you have invested you can make it up to 150000 so that you can reduce from the gross total income that is a very good thing actually most of the employees will take advantage of this those who are not able to take full 150000 exemption they will try to get whatever possible so i told you the merit of the scheme is one side you are saving compulsory savings every month one side you are able to enjoy the tax reduce the tax liability also so this is very good for the employees and everybody is making use of that so this is what i want to share in this module next module i am coming with atg deduction that is more important individual questions also you will get and in the combined computation of problem tax liability problems atg one or two items will be there so you have to learn that atc atg are all very important sections so you have to do that you have to learn that and i am going to do with the help of problems i am going to explain that see atc now you got an idea which all are eligible schemes which are eligible schemes you can accumulate your qualifying amount so this you have to remember when i'll do the problems i'll tell you these are the usual items that we that you can expect in the question but if you get a theory question you should remember all this that is why we have listed this and i have explained so when we'll do the problems i'll tell you two three items specifically you have to remember See, I told you LIC. It's important for two months. LIC two adjustments are there. One is ten percent and one is twenty percent. The date is one four two thousand twelve. Before and after. Then LIC. One more thing you have to remember: children, minor, major, married, unmarried. Everybody can be accumulated. Everybody can be accommodated, not accumulated, accommodated in the scheme. So they are eligible to get the saving ATC deduction. So this, these are the advantages of ATC deduction. and i hope you understood that and as i am telling you always i have pre i am preparing the commerce educational videos i have not seen anybody doing that full syllabus so this income tax i am completing i am completing the full syllabus so i am uploading already i have uploaded 16 videos in the channel youtube channel and please subscribe and please give your comments i will be replying personally i'll be replying every day i'll see the comments and i am replying to that so my channel is Ace Commerce with Dr. Alice Moni. So please see the channel. Please see all the videos. You can learn it in a systematic way. So that is what I am going to do. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening and thank you for all the support you are giving. So give me the feedback, even if it's positive or negative. So that is how both of us will get the benefit. Thank you.